what I love today is that I feel uh, at home because a person that I was happy to work with <laughs> has joined us today. Someone who I admire and like, respect. How much do you like doing this? Just <laughs> on a scale up. of one to ten, uh, we can shut it down now. We yeah. can shut it down now if you want. But a man who made deposit for the mics and the cameras. Right? I need a to man know. who uh, whose work I was aware of long before he became a national and uh, national international iconic figure. I was aware of this man's work upon the Broadway stage. I was a huge fan. I was very excited when we actually made our acquaintance professionally for <clears throat> nine years on the number one hit comedy of the, uh, of the 90s. Really? No, really? Really? No, really? Before we sat down in front of these mics, we've already had we've already, I've already four left. things he said that I could write down and go, I'm using that. <laughs> he's, a, he's a joy, he's a smart man, as, as you know, can talk about anything. Yes, he is. And a, an extremely funny man. You all know him. I think everybody knows him. The temptation is to say, hello, Newman, but, Bingo, but we don't we're going we to say that. hello, hello to our Wayne friend, Knight. Mr. Wayne Knight. Welcome to Really God No Really, sir. Bless you so all. So exciting to see you. COVID, God, we've lost touch with so many people. Ever since COVID, I'm, uh, I have not been the same. <laughs> <laughs> I've become Selma Diamond. <laughs> How are you, bro? I, you know, I, I talked to you recently because we were working on something together uh, that had nothing to do with show business, but I haven't seen you since, really, since the pandemic began. How's, yes. how's life? What's going on? I know you're working. Uh, you, you gotta, you're in a show and, and you're, yeah, you're always ha- working. No, I'm not always working. I'm always not working. But uh, now I am. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> well, that was enlightening. But was it, was it, uh, the, uh, you know, the pandemic almost broke a lot of people. Did, are you, you, you were okay. You got through. No, uh, was, I'm married. Yeah. Uh, and, and she works. Yeah. Uh, Thank which God. Which is a lovely Thank God. thing. Yeah, it's beautiful. Actually, which is bizarre, is uh, my wife Claire directed an animated film through the pandemic from home. Wow. wow. Um, she did a picture called Back to the Outback. Um, and, um, it was, um, you know, you zoom kind of world and, um, but yeah. you could assemble things off an avid and get people together oh, and, that's and, uh, it came out on, uh, and was great. And, you know, wow. so we, we had a life then, um, you know, so it, it was okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, I started, uh, doing what people do, which is anything I could. <laughs> but, that, you know, but that's so interesting because I knew, so. you know, we, we do a little bit of research about all of our guests and I knew some of this stuff about you, but you had s- such a kind of crazy, rich, diverse life around what we know you for as an actor that I almost want to, I want to start by going, if you, if this hadn't happened for you, if, if acting, what did you want to do? When did you go, oh, I'm going to be an actor and, and what else was on the table when you um, a biochemistry. No, Are you serious? No, um, I don't doubt it because I. <clears throat> but I'm not just saying so- this to be nice. You, you I, I've had. One of the things I've enjoyed so much about being around you all these years is you are legitimately one of the most intelligent, well-read, fascinating people I know. I'm not. Uh, I don't. Well, you I, strike I, me I, no, as such, I, which I mean, means I, I'm a functioning idiot. No, I, I, I don't read. <laughs> what I do is I, I, I listen to conversations, repeat them as if they were mine. Oh, good. Okay. And then leave the room quickly. <laughs> <laughs> what that does is it, it creates the impression. The impression of intelligence. The, I, I do it. The I do impressions of intelligence. People. You know, this is taking me back to phone calls. Wayne would say, you know, politically, blah, 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 and you go, I got to go. Yeah, you just got to leave quickly. Yeah. Don't stay too long after the intelligence. All right, all right. Account. So wait a minute, wait. Before acting, yes. you were a private investigator. Yes. How long? Five years I was a PI in New York. What? Uh, I got to hear. I can't how even. and why? I knew, I knew this because you had told me that before, but how Real, wait, wait. why? Listen, you got the bell. Really? Yeah, no, really, really no, private no, investigator. You have to say it. Say it. So, That's so how I know to hit God, the bell. Don't yell. You oh didn't, why God. can't you say it? It's pretty, he was a private investigator. Because I knew it. Really, no. You're the one you know, that's like, finding when, out. When is this going to go digital? They're finding out. They're finding out. Do you really think the analog bell works? I, I think it's old-fashioned. I'm, you know what? I give it in. I give it for him. But Just private little, investigator. Eh, eh, were, you good, something to play with. were you a good private investigator? Oh, no. Uh, but, but the thing is, here's the thing. So I'm an actor, right? And uh, I, I did a Broadway show. And uh, one of my castmates, you know, 
we're young, we're in our 20s. So when you crap out after that, you still crap out. Right. You know, you think this is going to be a continuum and right. I'm going to last forever. And, yes. You know, so uh, I didn't want to wait tables again. I, you know, I've been on Broadway and stuff. And, and I had a friend, he says, oh, I got a great job. I go, yeah, what do you do? He goes, I'm, uh, I'm a private investigator. I go, what? You don't have any criminology background. You never were a policeman. You don't know anything about this. He goes, that's right. I go, well, wh well, who would hire you? These people. I go, why? Why would they hire you? He said, they like actors. I go, why do they like actors? They're not upwardly mobile. They don't want a full-time job. And they're totally unscrupulous. I'm like, that's correct. That's me. <laughs> That's me. And you They're did. willing to lie about themselves ad infinitum. You know, I mean, uh, I've been building resumes my entire life. So why not just build an entire character that was fake and Whoa. then walk in a door? And that's what I wound up doing. And I, I did it on phone and I did it in person. And uh, I, I talked to like... Uh, admirals, heads of industry, uh, senators, getting references on people. I, um, I found out that somebody had been in a mental hospital the previous summer and they were trying to get a job as a startup engineer at a nuclear plant. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's a sitcom pitch. That's a sitcom pitch right there. Oh my God. Then, then I'm like so proud of myself. I go, and he was in a nut, and he, was, and he had shock therapy and everything. <laughs> then the phone rings and it's the candidate. The guy who's trying to get oh, the job. Oh, my God. And he goes, I'm so thankful to you. I've been hoping that a headhunter would come around. Nobody's ever had any interest in me. For two years, I haven't been able to get a job. Oh my my family is about to go oh under. My God. Oh, my God. Oh, Wayne. Oh, my oh Wayne. God. Oh, Wayne. Yeah. So and this is before Google. This is before the internet. You had yeah. to, you had to, you're a gumshoe. You're running around doing everything. Oh, I remember. Uh, I had one where I'm, uh, well, I'll give you the whole <laughs> schmear. We were doing this for an arbitrageur, right, who uh, has a lot of money. And uh, he has an au pair, an Irish au pair, who's in his home taking care of his kids. A very attractive young Irish woman. And he says to his wife, you know, uh, Maura is so talented and so clever. I think we're doing her a disservice by having her be here in the house. I should bring her down to the office and give her a real job. I think that she can go far. He goes, okay. <laughs> so she goes down there and, of course, gets immediately pregnant. Uh, but <laughs> she is a Catholic girl. Oh my God. And she will not have an abortion. Right. right. So... Uh, the arbitrageur sets her up in Red Hook, Brooklyn, because God knows you can't get to it, you can't get away from it. <laughs> so we just stash her over there in Red Hook, and maybe, you know, she'll go away. Oh so then they hire us to follow her. The wife finds out about this somehow, uh, because he tells the wife, listen, I think that the only thing I can do is... Like four days a week, I'll be with you. Three days a week, I'll check in on her just to make sure she's not doing anything, you know? And so the wife hires us to follow her because she might be cheating on him. And if she's cheating on him, he might drump, you know, dump her. So I'm following her. I'm in Red Hook in the rain in February. Uh, there's a, there's a three-legged dog walking by. And I'm like, hell. I hated this. She's pure as the driven snow, this girl. I fire, uh, follow her for miles from restaurant to restaurant, whatever, whatever, whatever. There's nothing wrong with her. Meanwhile, the wife says that she wants to hire us to follow the husband. Then the husband sees the wife, the people following him, and he believes that the wife is colluding with the girl for a divorce settlement. So we're hired by the <laughs> wife, by the husband. And the girl. No. Oh. Then the wife begins to have an affair with the head of the detective agency and has lunchtime nooners with oh him. Oh, my God. Really? I'm telling you, how could I leave this job? <laughs> and the overtime is unbelievable. Now, do you have to sit there like at three? If they're out till three in the morning, you're there till three in the morning. Yeah. Well, no. You have this thing. You know, you put your you put your sodas under the car if it's winter. You you know, instead of hot coffee, you have your cold soda under the thing. You have a sandwich. You got your thing. You got you know, you're all decked out. You're waiting there. The worst thing that could happen is if they leave the house. 
Because then you got to move. You got to move, you know. And, <laughs> and we don't have we don't have cell phones in those days, so you got to move and get from to a pay phone or whatever the hell. You don't know what or a walkie. And I always wondered too. Wow. In every show, even the best shows. When you leave, they look around and there's a car there yeah. with two guys sitting in it that's so obvious. Yeah. And then you pull out and it's one, two, they pull out. How do you do that in real life? You realize that people don't think they're being followed all the time. <laughs> So if you are standing next to somebody in an elevator, they don't go, are you following me? You know, no, I'm not. They don't think that way. All right, that makes, that oh makes sense. Five, five years. Five years, yes. And, and, and you know, I, I eventually, uh, I, I didn't get fired. I had to leave because my landlord was also my boss. The head of the detective agency was, your was also your landlord. No, it was also my landlord. He, I had an apartment on, on like because I had a great apartment. My apartment in New York was so fantastic. It was like seventy first in Broadway. They was building the oh, door wow. open. It was an amazing apartment. Wow. I was on the third floor. I had a little balcony. Oh, it was fantastic. Because I didn't realize the guy who helped me get in the apartment was trying to sit on it so that when it turned, he, oh, could, he could get rent. the building. Yeah, yeah right. Sure. Um, so I go. This past month up to New York for the first time in a long while, and I'm bringing my son, you know, who's 13, to see my apartment. This is where I lived, and blah, 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 blah. And while we're there, somebody is working their way out the door, and the doorman is helping them out, and it's Nathan Lane. Nathan Lane is now living in my damn department. Wow. You know? wow. Because it totally got renovated and wonderful and wonderful. And, yeah. You know, you dropped a bomb right before we started going, saying, I was talking to you, and we were talking about weight loss and, and character, and, and can you keep a job? Do people hire you once you look because they think you're not funny? And you said, my first job ever was on Broadway wearing a fat suit. Yeah. I, and uh, I think I saw this show. Was that Gemini? Yeah. 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 I was in a fat suit um, padded to a 54-inch waist. At the time, I had like a 36-inch waist. Um, I had to eat... Uh, a plate of spaghetti and uh, and uh, jelly donut eight times a week, and um, the uh, prop man on the show was a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> and what he would do is not, not cook the spaghetti and arrange it so that it looked cooked, and then like put some hot sauce under it so this be steam coming, and you'd be like. <laughs> Wow. crunchy spaghetti you wow. know and stale donuts and i would have to like bring him gifts and beg that he'd be nice to me because they wouldn't fire him you didn't have know. an equity uh, rep because i know they're so effective oh they're terribly effective <laughs> yes <laughs> did Most he of not like died. you was this a personal vendetta <laughs> i well i i don't think he liked me because i was on stage oh uh, <laughs> and he was so how long did that role go Oh, that I was, was in that, that was for a three run. years. Yeah. Long run. So you no, come from Broadway. But I guess that that jumps to the question. No, wait a minute. Hold on. Go I can't let that go by. You did that show for three years? Three straight? years. Over a thousand performances. Okay. Whoa. I Now, I, I, that's unfathomable to me. I know people do it, and, they, and there are records that go far beyond that for being They're in a They're sad role. people. But, my God, how did you not lose your mind? I did. If I do six months, I go, please give this to another actor. Oh, well, wait a minute. You're talking about the producers, for Christ's sake. No, no, no. Oh, how you did that I was for in, a week. No, when I was in... The, well, the, yeah, we could God. talk. But when I was in Broadway Bound... Uh, yeah, right, Broadway Bound, I had a 14-month contract. At the 10-month mark, I knew I was not no, doing I, my I, best I, mark. I, I lost my mind. Um, and and um, what's interesting is I learned how to act and at the same time, I reached the threshold of my tolerance. Yeah. I had to come to a new way of doing the show. And, um, and I did. And it worked for me. Yeah. <clears throat> Instead of doing a show, I was doing a decathlon. Uh, and each of these scenes became events. And I was trying to score tens on each event. Wow. And it became yeah. not about the audience. Yeah. It became about me. That I knew what a ten was. And I'm going for it. And if the audience don't like it, that's their problem. But if I hit a 10, it's a 10. That's uh, interesting. Did that help, the reframing it that way? It did. Because I could get out clean from a performance no matter what. I never had a bad... It wasn't like, ah, that the bunch of idiots, they're crazy. Yeah, they're right, 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 you know, right. that's what happens in the long run. In the long run, people talk about how bad the audience is. Right. Uh, you know, and, and I said, I'm going to give that up because I don't think that's beneficial it's, to right. you. Wow. 
You know, um, you I know what smart. you mean. I, I, I remember doing the same play, Broadway Bound. And, you know, the, you, the first six months, you're going, oh, I hope they laugh. Oh, I hope they laugh. After six months, you go, ah, sheep. Yeah, who cares? Sheep. They'll laugh at anything. Sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I know that that was shit. You still laughed. <laughs> so you do get demented. It does, it does happen. Well, wow. not only that, but I was working with, uh, you know, uh, this woman who was insane, this woman, Jessica James, who used to, <laughs> she used to hawk uh, into a, a curtain before she went on stage. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> you know, and then she would go. And I'm like, ah! And so there was a curtain with stalactites and stalagmites hanging off of it that I would have to push out of the way to get on stage. Oh, my. Oh <laughs> then my we also had, we had a replacement one time. We had a guy who was replacing oh. for the father. Uh, he went on stage. He was wearing his jacket inside out. <laughs> I said to him, schmuck, you got your jacket on inside out. He said, it's been established. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of weight. Was this the show that you left college one oh. credit shy for? What, what no, was what it? happened is, you know, I, I went to New York. Oh um, I, I had a, you know, I'm, I'm waiting tables. I'm, I'm waiting tables at Wolf's Deli across from Lincoln Center. <laughs> the worst. Oh God, I hate it. <laughs> I had to wear a stupid little jacket and I had to cater to all these old women who were like, I want it on the side and lean. You know, it's like, yes, I know, lean and on the side. Okay, fine. So that's where I am when I get the call that uh -huh. I got the job. Uh -huh. I am wearing the stupid little jacket. I go, excuse me for just a moment. I went out into the street, threw the jacket into the street, never went back. Wow. Just walked out of there thinking, uh. I'll never wait tables again. Not so. But in any case. Wait, wait, wait. But, oh. So you and I have, the, have at least this in common in that I also left my college prematurely yes i never did my senior year oh, because i got a yes. job that ran long and i couldn't go back and then i got another job so the, great no the one that was but mine was you regional theater. one credit no no i i, I was I, I went to a regional theater in in virginia yeah i got my equity card there right <clears throat> i was an intern at a place for two years there were 10 of us in the company only two of us got cards and it was in a production of uh, Taming of the Shrew, uh -huh. and then I went straight to New York. And um, so I was in New York for like a year or so, like a year and a half, and that's when I got wow. uh, Gemini. Okay, before, oh, so yeah. we'll, we'll go to the weight thing in a minute, but, and this I think is a really, no really, if I got this correct, and you before, give me the, What are you ringing before you- <laughs> It's a preparatory, really, no really. This, oh my God. <laughs> so I read, and I think I got it right, that you were doing a sketch show in England with yeah. Emma Thompson. Yes. Emma Thompson is ultimately kind of responsible for a lot of things in your life and that she turned you on to Kenneth Branagh. Yeah. Right, who gave you a gig. And I tried to turn her off. <laughs> <laughs> so Kenneth Branagh. I told him, I said, if, look, if you're going to marry him, marry him like a black widow spider. Fuck him, then eat his head. <laughs> <laughs> which is such sweet advice. So Kenneth Branagh puts you in something, did, and the, which got you to Oliver Stone, which got you to Paul Verhoeven, which got you to Spielberg. Yeah, well, not necessarily so in that order. Okay. Uh, uh, how it how it begins is, um, I was uh, I got to Oliver Stone from Lincoln Center and from other things uh, from Risa Brayman and being seen. Risa Brayman, sure. You know, uh, um, and uh, I remember auditioning for Oliver for um, um, JFK, and them saying, uh, "Don't be theatrical. Whatever you do, don't be theatrical." He hates theatrical. I said, what do you expect me to do? Like, how do you do? <laughs> like, what the fuck, what do you think I'm gonna do? <laughs> but in any case, I went in and I gave this Georgia uh, shit kicker kind of like uh, accent, because I know that I was looking for somebody and I'd, I'd growed up in Bartow County, Georgia, so I could do it. So I did that accent and Oliver loved it, loved it. That is not theatrical, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> and so then I get to New Orleans to do JFK and I'm playing a real guy, this guy Numa Bertel. Right. And he's from the French Quarter. He's from, uh, the, the, you know, he talk like, he come from Chapatulis. He's got that kind of New Orleans thing, a very yeah. different kind of accent than the one I was doing. And so I'm trying to, uh, so I'm going to do that for him. He goes, I don't want that. But I want what you did in the audition. I go, but that's wrong. That's not the accurate 
accent for this guy. He goes, I don't care. I go, but I do. Ooh. Whoa. And he hated me for the rest of the picture. And so he would say things to me. He would taunt me. He would be mean to me. We would be doing a scene. He goes, you have dialogue in this scene. You think you can handle it? I'm like, yeah, thanks. So is this an accurate quote when asked what it was like working on JFK? JFK you said, it's like being held hostage in a bank hold <laughs> Did I say that? Yes, you did. <laughs> But it was dog day afternoon. It was a good picture. Uh, oh, my God. No, wow. No, so, uh, and on the last day, he's going, uh, you know, uh, to Laurie Metcalf, you're going to miss me. When I, and he looked at me, and he goes, you're not going to miss me. I go, no, I'm not. Uh, so then from there. You, but, wait, did you tell me the story about Jay Sanders on that movie where he did a take, and, and Oliver came out from behind, he yelled cut, and came out and went, who are you? Who are you? Who the F are you? Who are, what are you doing on my movie? Who are they? And, and the response from Jay Sanders, and if this is a true story, I, I am so in love with Jay Sanders. He went, who am I? Who are you? Get behind your camera, yell action and cut. I'll take care of everything in between. Wow, <laughs> wow. That's wow. Just, and I thought you told it to me, but no, maybe not. No, it wasn't me. Okay. When I, if I knew that, no, that, I mean, that Jay had balls like that, I would have, mm. wowie zowie. So let yeah. me just let me finish this area. So yes, yes. Verhoeven, yes. you go to Verhoeven and you're in the famous movie, which is of the Shanson Basic Instinct. Yes. Well, how that happened is it was is simply an audition. Uh, going into, the, the, like, you're going to meet Paul Verhoeven. You're going to meet him in a hotel room. Oh, it's good. Wait, this one is great. Of those, I'm like, oh, great. Okay. All right. <laughs> so... Like, you know, I go up the stairs, I'm waiting at the door, and the door opens, and he's there with a the camera. <laughs> I go, hello? Yes? Well, come in, come in, come in. Okay. All right, okay. He goes, look into the camera. Okay, okay, all right. He goes, look closer. Okay. Now maybe you do a lick with your lips. Okay. I do a lick. He goes, all right, good, 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 good. Maybe you do another lick. Maybe do lick, lick. <laughs> and I go, lick, lick. I was, mm, yes. Go well, now. Maybe you do a third lick. Lick, lick, lick. And I go, <laughs> lick, lick, lick. Go well, now. Too many licks. <laughs> And this was your reaction, by That's the way. That's how I got the job. That's this how was, I got the and this job. was supposed to be serious? you looking at her in that famous scene. Now, is it true? Because I know people are probably ask you many times, "What did you see?" You had you were looking into a light box. I, I you nothing. Looking, right? I saw the mat box. <laughs> I mean, the camera. I got a Panavision camera, in like an inch from my face. You know, and everybody else is going wee, <laughs> and I'm just like, hey, you know, I don't see nothing. So you didn't see nothing, but you no. sweated like a pig. Was she even on the set when you were doing it? No, no, she would. That there, so that, the, so there's, there's that. Yes. And then because of all the schwitzing, but can you swimming, imagine the sense memory it took to come up? With that <laughs> <laughs> to really feel like you were looking at, mm. and yeah. then Spielberg wow. saw you sweating, and you were the first one cast in Jurassic Park. This is this is what I was told that he like he saw me in in Basic Instinct and thought, what if that were a dinosaur instead of a you know a wide open vagina, <laughs> uh, and uh, and so no literally I got cast. I had an agent at uh, Gersh at the time who says, "Are you sitting down?" <laughs> <laughs> I said, "No, no, but I I will if you'd like." He says. Steven Spielberg has called. He wants you in his next movie. And I'm like, okay. Uh, uh, why is that so startling to you? <laughs> Isn't that our mutual goal? <laughs> this guy had never talked to anybody who knew Spielberg. Uh, but but literally, I had not, I had not met Spielberg. I had gotten uh -huh. cast. I was flown to Kauai. Um, they took me in a, in a bus up a cane road covered in mud and it's rocking and whatever. We get to the top of the cane road to Blue Hole in Kauai, the rainiest place in the United, in the world. 360 days a year it rains there. But they had rain machines in case. <laughs> uh, and they used them. Wow. Um, so I, we get there to the gates of Jurassic Park. We pull up to the gates of Jurassic Park. And at the bottom of the gates of Jurassic Park is Spielberg. With you know the, with the viewfinder, with the viewfinder. Right, yeah. and I walk up to him and I go, "I hope I'm the guy you wanted." He says, "You're the one." <laughs> wow! <laughs> and did you enjoy like that movie? Must have been tough to do. I mean, you were mud. It was there. Was no I was soaking wet. I was as fat as a human can be. <laughs> 
I mean, most of the time while I was on the picture, people are going, he's going to blow. You know, and I'm like, no, I'm all right. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> I'm soaking wet. And they've got like this kind of like a uh, polo shirt that's not very stretchy that goes <laughs> over me that I have to, while wet, put on, take on, take off, take on, take off, you know. Uh, no, it was not. But an iconic scene. And then uh, the last question about that is this true or false? Because the rumor is one night, I guess you were filming here. And the spitter, that, that dinosaur, spit in your face, and it was a purple dye. Yeah, and then well, you had to go to Seinfeld, and the, your face was purple. The problem with this is, the guy who shot, like, I was shot in the face with a, uh, a, an air rifle filled with dyed black KY jelly. <laughs> there is a, 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 a guy <laughs> who was shooting me with the thing. He's looking at me disdainfully, which I find <laughs> troubling. <laughs> And he said, uh, don't blink or I'll have to do it again. I'm like, oh, okay. So you have to turn to camera and without blinking, I'm going to shoot you between the eyes with this, with this gun. And if you blink. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to oh do it again. God. Oh, my God. It took two takes. I couldn't get out of the first take. Uh, but that guy now lives across the street from me. And he has a better house than I do. <laughs> All right, I hit the bell at the right time. Oh my gosh! So there wow. you go. And now you were three, like three sixty at that point, right? Oh no, not that. Uh, I, I was like three twenty-seven and a half. <laughs> but that wasn't when you. I read that, 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 that when you lost the weight, the fear became the doctor sank you, and it was during a Seinfeld episode that you were palpitating or something. Well, happened. no. What happened is there, it was the episode um, where. Um, the farmer's daughter and, and, and the farmer and, and they, and they, they you know, bring the bottle deposit. Um, so um, I got Rance Howard firing a gun over my head and we're running through the field. And this girl is yelling like, goodbye, Norman. She, <laughs> she didn't know the name Newman. She literally was too stupid to figure out that it was Newman, not Norman. And we kept it in. So I'm running back and forth in this fake cornfield with my pants down. And, and I'm known for being able to run quickly. You, for which, by the way, man. don't don't blow by that. I remember watching him do and going, "This guy can move." No, you I'm were more. fast. I was fast. Yeah. And now I'm going to have back surgery in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> but in, in, in any case, so I'm running back and forth, running back and forth, running back and forth. We're doing it over and over again, and I'm getting what feels like angina pains. So I go immediately to a cardiologist and I say, I think I'm going to, and he's like, yeah, you got hardening of the heart on one side from blood pressure changes and this and that. And if you don't change your life, you're yeah. going to die. And yeah. I'm like, I don't want to die. Okay. So uh, I went to a trainer, started the whole process and began, you know, everything I could think of to lose the weight, to lose the weight. Um, and I did lose, you know, a good portion of it during Seinfeld. There was you could see uh, yeah. uh, some smaller. weight loss. Yeah, as you were coming down, I was going up. Yeah, and then and then <laughs> I left, and you know who the hell knows? But I, I mean, it was this has been the lifelong thing. You know, you go down. I've got like forty eight different pairs of pants. You know, oh, it's Tuesday. I'll wear those. At one point, you and I had discussed, and this this because because we're show is always about things that really kind of boggle our mind and make us go, what could that be about? But I remember you telling me at one point you would, you would, I remember seeing you, you looked not that, you know, being thinner isn't necessarily the, 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 the thing, but you, you were, you were really pretty trim and you looked really fit and you had lost, I think you said close to a hundred pounds and work sort of dried up. No, yeah. Nobody knew really what to do. And, and you, well, like, at nobody that point, really to said me, you looked like a leading man. I mean, you, oh, you but that's really, the worst possible thing that could have happened to me. I understand. I mean, like people are going, what I need is a, a really attractive looking Wayne Knight. <laughs> no, no, that's not what people want. I want someone I can safely ridicule and kick. Right. If I, if, if I can't ridicule you, what the hell do I want you for? Now, but so what do you, how do you get around? That? What do you do with that? I mean, well, the uh, way, listen, I, I mean, you, the way you've you, had a blessed career, but what, is, that's well, not, the best thing that happened to me was doing art on Broadway. Yeah. Um, it, it didn't really lead to other things in that direct way, but I got a little review uh, as the Times was looking at 
the people who'd replaced and whatnot. And they said something nice, like by the end of the play, you forgot that Newman ever existed. Yeah. Mm. And that was to yeah. me, one of the greatest things that anybody could say to me, right, of you course. know, I mean, I'm very proud of, of Newman. And yeah. I'm very proud of the characters I've done. Um, I give them full intent. I go all the way, you know, but I also started out doing straight film and comedy television. Uh, I didn't do comedy and film. It was right. weird. You know, uh, it allowed me kind of back and forth yeah. until Seinfeld happened. And then, you know, you're who you are. It, it, you want to look, there's so many things that come from being famous and there's so many negative things that come from being famous. You got to take the good with the bad. Yeah. You know, I mean, but you for you was was Newman a net neutral or a net positive? I think I think it's a net positive because, um, you know, there's so many things it gives you credibility in, in a way that you can't get otherwise. I right. mean, you know, you delivered. Uh, and you delivered on a show that I believe delivered for me. Mm -hmm. So I will look at you. Let's come on in. Right. You know, uh, right. So I think that that gives entree in a way. So for me, you know, it's, we talked about it before we started taping, you yeah. know, there were two years where I blatantly and with, <laughs> without any trying to hide it, wore a toupee because I had, I had lost so many roles to producers who said, well, I don't want the audience to think of you as George. Right. And I went, nobody worries about hiring Tom Hanks and they're going to think of him as far as Gump. Why am I saddled with this thing? You know, my theater career was pl more often than not playing 15 people a night. I'm a little yes. bit of a chameleon. And, um, you know, I, I desperately tried to, to create a different impression. So I, I, I feel blessed and there's never a day that I don't thank God Almighty and Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David for giving me the life that I have. But but George has opened a lot of doors. George has closed a lot of doors yeah. for me that are not going to open. But I at least, and I don't I don't mean to put it in these terms, but it's it's a reality. I was compensated for that in an extraordinary the, way. The, <clears throat> this is exactly the problem. Yeah. It is exactly the problem. Because um, if you were not, then all what you get afterwards you are not being compensated for in terms of the time lost. Right. Uh, and that, and what, what I didn't understand, too, is that there are opportunities that come at the end of a show, and if those opportunities don't hit, then you're back at sea. Right. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. And you think, well, this is just the beginnings of, you know, the opportunities that will come from having done this. But you don't know that, and you right. don't understand that. And uh, I have a much better view of the business now than I did when I was young. And it, it's, you know, just commodities broking. It's it's just, you know, what's hot at the moment. And right, you bet. Did you get yeah. a lot of pitches for your own sitcom right after Seinfeld? Uh, well, I, I actually, Larry Charles wrote uh, a sitcom for me and uh, to which, you know, Jerry said, Larry? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> 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 he oh, said, man. I understand an insane monologue, but an entire sitcom in a pilot. <laughs> uh, and and we, we were pitching it, you know, uh, to Jamie Tarsus and, and um, um, oh, I'm trying to think at that time. It wasn't, it was after Brandon. It was before, but I don't know. Yeah. Was it Warren? Yeah, Little it was yeah. Warren, yeah. Warren and, and, and uh, Jamie. And, and uh, they were eating a sandwich at the time. And they were both having sandwiches at the time. And, uh, uh, and Larry had come in, Larry Charles, had come in wearing pajamas. And I'm like, you, you couldn't wear a sweater? Like maybe pretend you've golfed once, <laughs> you know? I mean, we're meeting network people. It's, they'd like that kind of thing. And, and the first thing he talked about was this, you know, it's very much like Hamlet's ghost. You know, when <laughs> Hamlet's ghost comes in and Hamlet, and I'm like, my eyes are spinning up in my head and I'm thinking, this is the end of my career right now. <laughs> and it was. <laughs> <laughs> so was. you hadn't agreed that it was Hamlet's Ghost going in? You, 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 well, no, I mean, just that I, I understand. It was a great show. It was a great show. Wrong pitch. It was about a vegetarian butcher in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> Writes itself. <laughs> Writes itself. Who ha has to come home to save the butcher shop because his father has died. And, you know, uh, on the street. It was all good, but, you know, it's just... Uh, the and was time. it Newman-esque or was it a, a, different, a whole different kind of character? I, I, I you know... Uh, I'm, I'm sure it was uh, Newman-esque in some ways. Yeah. 
Um, because, you know, at the time, I, I, you know what happens is you become successful at something and then uh, immediately you, you say, uh, well, I must repudiate that. It's like, right. Why? Why would you do that? And it's like I want to play only serious roles of Nordic men with blonde hair. And it's like, eh, come on, you know, it's just like well, insane. What are, I was talking to William Macy, interviewing William Macy, and he said, when I was in my twenties. It was all about, can I change, make a difference with it? He said, in my 40s, it was about the cash. And now, at my age, it's, do I have to get wet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, it completely, it completely morphs into, into that. And, which is exactly what you're saying. It's just, it's just that different. But you would, looking back, you would have done Newman. By the way, Jason hit me with a line. We were both so excited when you were coming in. And you got, I just laughed out loud because... Well, he asked me, what, you know, what were the iconic moments? And I said, well, Wayne had two lines that, you know, basically shut me and everybody else down. One of them, I think you ad-libbed. The other one was scripted. But And this sounds like an ad-lib from you. He, he who controls the mail <laughs> controls information. <laughs> I don't know. The one, the, the one uh, ad-lib was, and then it's... Uh, um, and the barcode reader breaks and it's publisher's clearing out sweepstakes day. <laughs> but is, I think, didn't you also, was it the one that killed me? I, I thought it was an ad lib is when you're driving the mail truck and it bursts in the flame. Yes. And you went, oh, the humanity. Yes, that, that was an ad lib. <laughs> you know, the cool thing was I used to go visit him on the set and watching everybody oh, do, do this God. constantly. The oh. joy on that set was just something. Well, let me, can I ask you a question about that? I wasn't thinking about this, but... So recently I've seen, um, uh, there was an actor named Armin Shimmerman who did an yeah, episode yeah, yeah. of our show, and uh, I saw something about Keith Hernandez, both of which, Armin said that our cast was, was very unwelcoming, uh, un, unwelcoming to him. He felt like he was not appreciated at all. Keith Hernandez said, I in particular was, I think the word was standoffish. I always thought we were, and I'm not looking for a compliment here, I thought we were kind of a welcoming set we were excited about people that have would you come ever been in. on another show yeah uh, well then and you still think that anyway uh, <laughs> were we were we no were we cold were we welcoming were we warm were we you were professional uh-huh uh and you were the top show on television and it was like this is opening night on broadway don't fuck it up is that the vibe you got? Oh, wow. Uh, the vibe is that everybody was thrilled to be there, and they and they understood the nature of this beast. Uh -huh. And Jerry was very was welcoming and you know, friendly. And whatever. Right, right, right. Uh, Larry was scary as hell. Yeah. Because he was too relaxed seeming, and you couldn't like how could somebody so laconic and loose be, be so this. scary? Right, 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 right. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, I think that, uh, no, I, I think that I enjoyed being on the show because every time you started a scene, you knew it delivered. You just had to not be in the way right, of it. Right, yeah. Find the joke, hit the joke. The joke is there. So, uh, I mean, the number of shows I've been on <coughs> where, you know, you go on an expedition to find the joke. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, this was not that. No, the material was always uh, good. It was always, always good. good. So that's yeah. daunting. You're coming into a situation, you know, with any uh, military leader, with any political leader. My brother always said, you know what, what people, why people follow somebody? Certainty. If they yes. deal with certainty. That's a very powerful thing. Even if it's wrong, if it's crazy, if it's a lie, certainty. I think that's what you're walking into there. There's yes. a certain certainty, and you go, "Wow, I better not." So it's tense already. It's uh, you know, it's just really interesting to me because I I always I, I knew that Jerry for the most part was a, was a warm host for people. I thought, um, you know, I, I I hoped that I was. I, I felt like Julia was. I know Michael was off and off working on his own on stuff, but I thought we were all kind of gracious. But I have been on enough other shows to know where the warm ones are like working on Maisel and working on young Sheldon. I went, Oh, this is, I feel like I've been here for a long time. I feel like I'm part of the family walking right in there are other shows and you're walking into a very dysfunctional family. Or it doesn't feel um, a, a, you can hear the wind blowing. Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, w there are conversations going on right. where people are playing with each other and then they're doing the show. Yeah. Uh, third rock was the most friendly show I had ever really? been on because John Lithgow's father was ran a Shakespeare theater. 
Mm. And so he knew how to be the captain of a ship. Mm -hmm. Um, It was ingrained in him how to take care of people, to be gracious, to make sure that everybody was together, to keep it, you know, moving. Wait a minute. You had... Captain Kirk, who had a captain of a ship. The date was that was that a weird thing dynamic between the two of them? Let's go. No, Spanish. no, no, not not really. No, I mean because this was such a totally different thing for uh, Bill, Bill Shatner. Yeah. You know, I mean, and and he was having a great time. You know, he, uh, which he does, I think, in general. Oh, Bill, That's how he lives to be a thousand and seven. I've known him for <laughs> thirty eight or forty years. Jason knows him a long time, and what people don't know who are intimidated by him. This is a voracious reader, a voracious traveler. He wants to know everything about everything. He's just fascinated, which is why he does everything. You turn on the TV, 97. He's got this show going on. He's got a travel show going on. He's got an in search of strange things going on. I mean, he just he just is a sponge, and he always and he soaks up everything every day. He had a three season uh, show on toe fungus. <laughs> yes. You, oh, you watched that. Yeah. Compelling, yeah. We're compelling. The right? man <laughs> sold a kidney stone on eBay for charity for thousands and th- tens of thousands for charity. Of for charity, I've had nine of them. If I knew, <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Really? No, really. We could sell when they hit the screen. You when passed. they're coming out of if your people, if people give us a really that we use. We should send them one of my kidney stones. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, that's Have gonna you be. passed nine kidney no, stones? No, I passed four and five of them. They had to go get. They get them or they like, or no, they, they, they blow them up. Get them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, I've had, I've had, I've been violated on many occasions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. They go in. They have to go in. A team yeah. goes in with a camera. I, I used to tell a thing about, you know, the first time I, I, the, the guy said to me, it's a pretty big stone, Mr. Alexander. I don't think you're going to pass it naturally. I think we have to go in and get it. And I said, uh-huh. Two questions. Um, what do well, you mean, go in? And who's we? <laughs> <laughs> And by the way, we didn't get to it, but back to the fat suit and fat, the fat deal. You know, yeah. just in researching, it's really interesting. Because I was a chubby kid. You know, I went to the husky shop, you know, where you couldn't... Yes. Yeah. Hus- yes. Which is also was yeah, really husky, not good. that's husky. a great... Like, I'm leading the pack at the next I did a ride. But, but it's know? so <laughs> interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Husky, where husky. did they come up with husky? Yeah, right, husky kid. Yeah, sensitive, <laughs> sensitive. Yeah, yeah. Picture of a... Siberian Husky's head in a three-piece suit was the logo. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I went, Mom, really? So, yeah. but I had to go to the place for wide shoes. I had to go to the place for wide clothes. Yeah. Every freaking thing yeah. on me but was what wide. I didn't wide realize. Wide whale corduroy. And I went, that's great. And, you, and by the way, that, wide oh, yeah. and whale. Oh, yeah. Right into the name. And not only that, the, but then you also have the chafing in oh, the, the other oh, you oh, bet. Wide whale corduroy actually just sticks together. On, on wide whale corduroy on a fat person is just a way of starting a fire in the woods. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So to that point, though, it's it's with the there's Ozempic shaming now, which is fascinating. People going, oh, she probably took it. Oh, he didn't take it. I can't lie. Why do you have to do it hard? Or well, <laughs> why should you judge who's doing it? But I never realized to the extent because when you get into the medical area, and I don't know if you've ever experienced it when you're heavy. The doctors, when you talk to them, they're listening to you about whatever you're saying, but it's really you know what lose lose forty pounds is a beginning to do it. They right, they right, diminish right. what you have, and I didn't realize with the fat shaming. How many people don't want to go to the doctor? How many people are embarrassed to go to a hospital because of the way you're treated? Um, and it's it's a big, much well, bigger I, I've dialogue. Gotta go, I've got to go have um, surgery on my back from, you know, just being obese and, and also thinking that my job was to do falls. Oh, Wayne. <laughs> I did falls for so many years. Uh, I, my, I started in college falling down concrete stairs, doing falls. To get laughs. And yeah. And so I'm on the last show I'm doing, I'm practicing this fall like 18 times before we shoot it because I want it to be just right. And I'm like, what are you, an idiot? You know? Yeah. So I've totally wrecked myself. But in going to the doctor, because my legs are all beat up from all the, I don't want to go, I don't want them to see that. When I was doing Jurassic Park, I was, you know, 18 zillion pounds, and um, my leg kept hitting the Jeep in trying to open mm. the, the gates. Right. And uh, I couldn't get in and out of the Jeep fast enough. The thing is ripping the skin off my leg. Mm-hmm. And, and so I'm in Kauai, everybody else is swimming and whatever. I've got a giant gaping wound on my leg. I don't go to the doctor. Because I, I'm afraid that they'll tell me I'm going to die. I'm fat. Yeah. So just, I, I don't want to hear it. And my I, doctor's I the same rap every time. I was just there. I was just there. And he's a wonderful guy. At, God. And he, he does the whole checkup. You go in the office, and this is his rap every time. First of all, God bless your mom and dad. The genetics they've handed you, 
You are such a healthy guy. Your blood work is perfect. Your and it shouldn't clear. be. Your heart is good. You've got no plaque. Your cholesterol is great. Blah, blah, blah. Your liver function, your kidney function, terrific. God bless you. You should live to be 110. Pause, pause. What the fuck do I have to do to get 25 ah, pounds off? Ah, <laughs> ah, ah, <laughs> it always ah, comes down to that. And, and, and honestly, it makes me go, I don't want to go. I know what he's going to no, say. No, no, what you should say, say to him is, look, I don't want to shame my children by living to be 130. <laughs> Let me die at 110. You're in the uh, as the we bookie? wrap up. Yes, what are we? The bookie is your is your new show. Yes, uh, and also I have a, a series coming out this year uh, uh, called Them on uh, on Amazon. Is that an um, alien thing? No, it is actually. Uh, it takes place in Los Angeles during the days of Daryl Gates, and I play a police detective. Wow! And it is a uh, one of these kind of uh, horror shows about race. Wow. Uh, don't do it actory. But I'm not a bad guy. <laughs> yeah, do I hope you're not theatrical. Enough. Don't be theatrical. I hope you're not, not theatrical. theatrical. <laughs> do you have to do an accent? <laughs> what? Well, uh, it was a uh, no, because it's Los Angeles. I didn't have to do it. Uh, How many accents? By the way, I was fascinated. I always fascinate when people can do stuff like accents or whatever. How many accents can you do? Or have Three. You? I've done them. <laughs> you heard them? <laughs> you heard them here. You know what? Most actors, we don't, we don't like practice things in the no, void. The Orleans, you learn the, what you need. The New Orleans <laughs> thing was fascinating. How you went into that was great. And by the way, one bit of trivia. So Sharon Stone, we just flew on a plane and I found out, can I give the two facts that I found out on a plane? Flying on a sure. Plane? He, by the way, is the worst person to fly with because he does the same thing oh, every time. Go. Another thing. No, 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 I'll, I'll tell you why. I'm the worst. I'll tell you why. I'm the worst driver, I'm no, the worst no, flyer. I'll tell you why. I'm, I'm the worst friend, uh, I'm the worst father. I'm the worst, go ahead, go ahead, enjoy well, yourself. You're a couple of stuff Knock there. yourself you're, out. You're throwing a go couple, ahead. you added some categories. <laughs> so, so every time we're about to take off, and we've had some incidents in planes where we actually had a flight into Burbank where the pilot said, we're gonna, it's really windy, we're gonna attempt to land. <laughs> and, we went, <laughs> <laughs> and we got to the ground and it went up again. And then silence, and then we're gonna attempt to land and we landed okay but jason every time we're about to take how off, is that my fault i'm no, no, the worst I'm person saying, to fly but with. every time every time we're about to take off he goes you know my cousin who's a pilot says it's the most dangerous he always gives me <laughs> something <laughs> like that but do you know i didn't know this until today do you know why they dim the lights in the cabin before you take off they don't want to see what happens <laughs> <laughs> and you're right you're not far from wrong <laughs> and this was fascinating why why do they because takeoff and landing are the most dangerous times yes. okay and your eyes take time to acclimate to the dark if something happens. So they want the flight crew already acclimated in case something happens and there's no power so they can see. How about that? And there's <laughs> always a jump seat. If you look through the car, if you ever sit first class or business or whatever, or in the front of the plane, there's yes. the curtains and then there's the jump seat that looks Facing out. that way. So you can see the person sitting there. So if they're in a skirt or dress, it's kind of, could you gotta be careful. That is called the Sharon Stone jump seat. <laughs> I didn't realize it actually has a name. So how about that? I had no idea. Really, really no, really. Then I should be getting free rides. Sharon, <laughs> dim the lights. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our friend Wayne Knight, actor extraordinaire. Thank you for coming. Thank you for hanging out. My Thanks pleasure. for uh, the, Being so the funny. joy of your company for all these. You know, I, I barely know about the show, but you got all the merch. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. We do. We have the one. We have one. It's just one. I got a shirt that Peter refuses to wear. He has a cup that um, he gave it to me and it, it broke. didn't last. <laughs> he broke he the didn't cup. get through the dishwasher one cycle. Didn't even get through the dishwasher. One I think cycle. a do-rag is the next thing. <laughs> The really, no, really do, <laughs> official do-rag. All right. You are now our merchandise director. I thank right. you for that.